And the same question I put to Angela Rainey yesterday. Why deputy? Why not go for the big job? Well, I think my skills are in beating the odds and organisational. I've held on to a marginal seat in Scotland as the only Scottish Labour MP in twice uh, succession now. So it's important to have someone that can organise, have someone that can raise the profile of the party and have someone that can pull the party together. Why do you think you were able to hold on to your seat when, when so many others weren't? Uh, what is different about the message that you were giving to voters on the doorstep to, to what the rest of the Labour Party was doing? Well, I've been building a broad coalition of support in South Edinburgh for the last 10 years now and putting uh, forward proposals because I listen to what the public and my constituents tell me and that's very important for the party as a whole to reflect on. If we look at what the public were saying to the Labour Party on the 12th of December, they didn't appreciate the policy platform that was being put forward and they rejected the leadership. So it's important now to listen to that and to respond positively. How did you counter that on the doorstep? Well, it was very important to say to the public that the uh, Labour Party was listening, that the Labour Party would change. We were fighting for a Labour government, of course, the legacy of the, uh, the 12th of December as an 80-seat majority for the Conservatives, which is a dreadful legacy for the Labour Party to leave. It leaves millions of people up and down the country desperate for Labour government, and we have to listen to what people were saying. I very much responded to what people were saying, and that's why I've decided to throw my hat into the ring for the deputy leadership. So you think a change is needed. Uh, presumably, then, you wouldn't be standing as deputy leader if Rebecca Long-Bailey got the job. Well, it's very important that the people realise what the public have been saying to us. And I think we just need a bit of honesty about what actually happened. And I think if we're honesty, honest and principled, we can take this debate forward. And I think the architects of the disaster of the 12th of December should not be the architects of what should happen uh, in the future. We need a fresh start and we just can't have a fresh face and a different voice. We need a different direction. And that's incredibly important. And that's what I'll be arguing over the next six weeks. So who of the rest of the candidates would you, would you like to succeed? Well, it's incredibly important for a deputy leader to work with whoever the leader is uh, of the Labour Party. But I hope that party members and supporters up and down the country who are going to get involved in this process as per the timetable that you've just shown uh, in the run-up to this interview uh, will reflect on whether or not they want the Labour Party to be a credible alternative government or whether they want it to be on the opposition benches as a party of protest. I certainly want the former because we know when the Labour Party is in government we can transform lives, we can take millions of people uh, out of poverty and I want to look to the future about how we deal with those big issues of the future and the Labour Party and how they respond to it in terms of the Labour Party values and how the Labour movement operates. That's what I'll be arguing for and I hope that the leadership candidates will be doing likewise. Uh, so of those leadership candidates, I mean, you know the names. Is it Keir Starmer? Is it Jess Phillips? Are they the, the kind of people that you'd want to back? Well, we're going to have to change to win. Uh, and I think it's important for the leadership candidates to show that the Labour Party will change. And the only way it will change is if we listen to the public. It's incredibly important uh, to be able to listen to what people were telling us on the doorsteps, all the way from Land's End to John O'Groats, and the seats that we lost, and the seats that we held, and in the seats that we'll never win. We have to listen to the public who want a Labour government, who share our values, and who want us to change in order to, to win again and to be a credible alternative government. That's what I want leadership candidates to be saying. I think many are already saying that, but I think just a rerun of what we've had in the past or a continuation is not what the Labour Party needs at the moment because the public have roundly rejected that. Now, that would be an uncomfortable message for some, but it's a message that the public have told us, and if the politicians and the Labour movement doesn't listen to the public, then we will get the same as we got on the 12th of December, and that's letting the country down. Why won't you give me a name? I mean, you're saying that, that, that the public don't trust politicians, that you've got to be straight with the public, but I've asked you the same question twice and you give me the same answer twice. Why won't you just tell me who, you, who you'd prefer to see as running the party? Well, it's up to the leadership candidates to do that. I think I'm laying out quite clearly that I'm saying the architects of the defeat can't be the architects of the future, and all the leadership candidates will be making their uh, pitches uh, across the country, uh, and I think it's important for them to continue to do that. I will support whoever is the leader of the Labour Party, but I want the Labour Party to listen to the public and I okay. want us to put forward a positive policy platform that talks about the future and I want the deputy leader position to organise the party uh, properly so that we can win again. Okay, who do you think, uh, who is, who's your hero, who do you think has been the best leader of the Labour Party so far? Uh, well, I'm a Smithite. Uh, John Smith's uh, widow still lives in my constituency. Um, I was a big fan of John Smith, and I think uh, on the week that he died, he said that all we ask is to serve, and I think that's an important message for everyone uh, in the Labour movement, but we need to serve from a position of government. That's what the Labour Party was invented for. That's what Clause 1 of our Constitution says, uh, and the only way we're going to be able to do that is to reflect on what happened on the 12th of December, respond positively, or the Labour Party uh, will get rightly what it deserves because the public will feel as if it's not listening to them. So uh, John Smith's my political hero. 
in Murray. Good to talk to you. Thank you very much for joining us.